Now you're ready to start your next project, but odds are you still have your program open from the previous project. Make sure you remember to save your program with a unique name, then use the File menu to select New to create a new program. This will create a new blank space where you can write a new program for this project. Once you've started programming, remember to save the file with a new name using the File menu and Save. For this project, you'll be using external metal objects connected to your Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins instead of buttons on your keyboard. That means the program you need to write will be a little different, but just follow along one step at a time and you'll be able to create your code. So the first thing you're going to do is go up to the control blocks, so click on the control button, and then you're going to use the very first block that says when green flag clicked. So you're going to drag that out into your program area, and this is going to act like a button that tells your program to start running. You'll notice if you look in the upper right corner of the window, there's a little green flag that you can click to start a program, and a red stop sign that you can click to stop a program. The next thing you're going to do is create a variable. So go up to the top left and click on the variables button, then click make a variable, and in the window that pops up, call the variable delay and hit OK. Variables are very convenient when you need to use the same number more than once. You can read more about variables in the section below this video. Now you're going to need to set that variable to some small value, a fraction of a second. So go over to the menu on the left, click on the set variable block, drag that out, and use that to set delay to about 0.25 seconds. Next, we're going to introduce a new programming concept called a loop. A loop lets your program repeat a certain section of code over and over again. If you go to the control menu, you'll see that there are two different types of loops you can use. One says forever, which means the code will repeat indefinitely, and one says repeat followed by a number, which means the code will only repeat a certain number of times. For this project, you're going to use the forever loop, so drag one out and set it below the block where you set the delay variable. Now you'll notice that the forever loop has a blank space inside it where you can put more code. We're going to fill that with something called an if statement, which lets your program check to see if one of the input pins has been triggered when you hit one of your drums. Drag the if statement out and put it inside the forever loop. This will tell the program to repeat forever, checking to see if something has happened. You'll notice that there's a blank spot in the if statement that is shaped like a hexagon. We're going to fill that with an equals sign which you can find under the Operators menu. Under there, you'll notice that there are several blocks that are shaped like hexagons that will fit into that spot on the if statement. Drag an equals sign out and drop it into that spot. Now you see that the equals sign has two empty spaces in it. We're going to fill one of those with another new block under the Sensing menu. So click on Sensing, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the Sensing menu, and there is a Sensor Value block. Drag that out, and put it into the first empty space of the equals sign block. The sensor value block has a drop down menu you can use to select different input and output pins on your Raspberry Pi. The first one you're going to use is pin 7, so click on the drop down menu and select pin 7. Now there's one more empty box in your equals sign that you need to fill in. You are going to click in that text box and type 0. This is going to tell the program to do the code inside the if statement when pin 7 sensor value equals 0, which is what happens when you touch your drumstick to the drum. Now when you hit your drum, you want the program to play a sound, so you can go to the sound menu and drag out the play sound block and snap it inside the if statement. However, remember that now this program is looping over and over again, so it's going to keep checking if you've hit the drum, and if you hold the drumstick on for too long, it might play the sound more than once. So you're going to add a wait command to make the program pause before it continues and checks again. Drag out a wait block from under the control menu, then go to the variables menu and drag out the variable delay. This will cause the program to pause for the amount of time you have set the delay variable to. Now remember that you have four drums total, so you're going to want to copy over this block of code three more times. Remember that you can do this by right clicking on the if statement and selecting duplicate to copy the if statement and everything inside it. Right click, select duplicate, and then click to place the new block of code. Repeat this using the duplicate command until you have four blocks of code total. Remember that if your program gets too big to fit on a single screen, a scroll bar will appear, allowing you to scroll down and see the rest of it. Now, for your second block of code, click on the drop down menu and select pin 26. For your third block, 
click on the drop down menu and select pin 24. And finally, for the last block, select the drop down menu and click on pin 19. This ensures that you have four different pins available to connect your drums to. Finally, you probably don't want every single one of your drums to play the meow sound effect. So remember that you can import more sounds by going to the sounds tab, clicking on the import button, and then selecting a sound of your choice. After you've picked the sounds, you can go back to your program and use the drop-down menus to select different sounds for each drum.